In tonight's Project Earth, our warming planet does not simply threaten more punishing droughts, intense wildfires, and extreme weather. Our changing climate could also disrupt the world's beer supply. And Makovic discovers how California scientists are hard at work brewing up solutions. In Oakland's Fruitvale District during Oktoberfest, or frankly on any night, the beer is here. We had plans to celebrate and, you know, have pretzel and beer and just have a good time. The guy behind the tap? That's how you stay strong through your 40s and 50s. 46-year-old Morgan Cox. Morgan owns Ale Industries, where he brews and serves up all kinds of craft beer. It smells like a combination between bread that's being baked with honey and granola. This batch uses 20 bags of malted barley, fresh water, yeast, and just the right amount of hops. That's the plant that gives beer its bitter taste mm. and aroma. Yeah, I, I love the smell of hops. But as the earth gets warmer, a cold brew may be harder to find. Three critical ingredients, barley, water, and hops, are all under a growing threat. So with climate change, you know, uh, it's one spectrum or the other. It certainly does concern me. Beer is an agricultural type product and uh, agriculture is very much affected by climate change. A recent study found warmer temperatures, severe drought and extreme weather could trigger a decline in the world's beer supply by as much as 16 percent. But beer experts in California are up to the challenge. It's one of those things on the horizon that we're keeping a very close eye on. UC Davis houses one of the most respected brewing schools in the world. Here you'll find Glenn Patrick Fox, a professor of malting and brewing sciences. When it comes to beer, it still throws us curveballs, still trying to understand the complex chemistry and biochemistry that goes on in brewing beer. Fox's team is looking into how extreme weather can impact the quality of the barley. One finding that excess heat can alter the size and the shape of the grain. We're slowly unraveling this really complex system. With the altered grain, it takes longer to break down its starch into sugar, and sugars needed by the yeast to make the beer, something the industry might want to consider. Possibly there's some new methods they could implement that would flag some of these potential problems. Storms and wildfires can also cause problems. Rain at the wrong time may cause the grain to germinate before harvest and may also cause mold during storage. The smoke from wildfires can contaminate the hops and ruin them. There could be more hops rejected and there's a cost. There's always a cost to all of this. But there's also creativity and innovation. When we first opened in 2009, we were now the proud owners of a brewery and we had no ingredients to be able to make beer. When Morgan opened up his brewery, there was a worldwide hops shortage. It was impossible for us to buy hops. So his first beer was made with gruit, an ancient technique that flavors beer with wild plants and herbs. We ended up subbing in uh, coriander, chamomile, and orange peel. That first beer remains a bestseller today. It has a, a really big cult following, that's for certain. Remembering tools from the past and tapping into new discoveries to face the future head on. Well, cheers to that. Well, Gruet formulas vary from beer to beer. Dr. Fox told us more often than not, brewers and pine needles in a Gruet to bitter their beers.